I'm Ken Campbell. And here in my shed, with all this paraphernalia, I'm going to recreate the experiments which change the world. An eclipse like this one transformed our understanding of space, time and the universe. In 1919, a British astronomer went to test a theory that was one of the biggest ideas of all time, the general theory of relativity. I'm going to relive that experiment and find out why it turned our world upside down. That theory was the brainchild of Albert Einstein, the first scientific superstar. Einstein was born in Ulm, Germany, in 1879. He was a plodding, introverted child. His parents thought he was rather stupid. However, he showed tremendous determination and patience. He built houses of cards 14 storeys high. It's not that I'm smart, he said, it's just that I stay with problems longer. Einstein had a curiosity about the world that lasted a lifetime. When he was five years old, little Einstein got very ill and his dad bought him a magnetic compass, thought it'd cheer him up. And little Einstein really perked up when he found this. He found that no matter how much you twist it and turn it, whatever you do with the thing, that needle always points north. <laughs> this was his introduction to science. <laughs> Einstein became obsessed with the latest theories in physics. Along. You're travelling along below the speed of light and you've got your mirror, your mirror's travelling on. At the university in Switzerland, he was bored by the outdated curriculum. So Einstein would cut classes and in the meantime be engaged in, in vivid discussions in philosophy and physics, talking long into the night upon topics that were hardly dealt with in his curriculum. By now, he'd blossomed into the life and soul of Zurich Café Society and fell in love with fellow physics student Mileva, whom he later married. But his studies suffered. He left university with a mediocre academic record and few prospects. After months of job hunting, he was eventually hired as a clerk at the Swiss Patent Office. Einstein's job was to evaluate new inventions. This low-grade post suited him perfectly. It gave him plenty of time to ponder the riddles of the universe. We know that Einstein kept his own work underneath the official papers of, of the Patent Office. And when times were slow in the Patent Office, he would simply turn to his own work and pick up his calculations or his line of thought. He was preoccupied with the big puzzle of 19th century physics, which was the very peculiar way light behaved. Very peculiar indeed. First, we have to understand relative motion. Relative to an observer on the ground, I'm travelling at 50 miles per hour. Relative to the driver of another car going at 30, I'm only going at 20. Much to everyone's horror, light doesn't behave like the car. Two scientists, Albert Mickelson and Edward Morley, did an experiment in 1887 which showed that the speed of light does not change even if you are moving relative to it. Here's my version of their experiment. This is my famous patented light speed measuring device. It measures the speed of light and the speed of the car. Right, my assistant over there is going to flash his light at me and we're going to measure its speed. You ready, Dan? Ready. Dan, flash it at me! As expected, my machine has measured the speed of light to be 186,000 miles per second. So what happens if I drive away from my assistant and his flash? Now I'm driving away from the light. 
So I would expect my light measuring equipment to show that the light is travelling at a speed of 186,000 miles per second minus the speed I'm travelling at, OK? So let's see what happens. Now let's imagine my car's top speed is 10,000 miles per second. My meter should read light speed to be 176,000 miles per second. Go on, flash again, Dad! Wow, man, the speed of the light still stays the same. The fact that the speed of light never changes, no matter where you are or how fast you're moving, seemed a contradiction. It mystified every physicist, including Einstein. Einstein went back to basics and asked himself, what exactly is speed? It's distance divided by time. The speed at which I'm walking is the distance between these two trees divided by the time it takes to do it. Einstein pondered how this definition could explain the fact that the speed of light is always constant. One day, Einstein was walking in a park with his friend Besso, when suddenly... I got it. The answer was brilliant and challenges our fundamental laws of the universe. Einstein realised if the speed of light has to stay constant, time has to slow down or speed up. And distance has to shrink or expand. This was the cornerstone of his special theory of relativity. This startling new theory had taken over his life. His wife, Mileva, resented his obsession with physics as he now spent precious little time with her and their two children. Their marriage began to crumble. After their initial real closeness when they were students, Mileva and Einstein had gradually separated and Einstein became involved with his cousin, a widow, Elsa. He had several affairs. Elsa would politely leave the house and spend the day away when she knew that Einstein was meeting his flame and not ask any questions, not push that particular boundary. Despite his turbulent home life, Einstein knew his work wasn't finished. Although special theory was revolutionary, it still didn't explain a fundamental force of nature, gravity. Einstein pondered again the bizarre behaviour of light. I'm going to do my version of one of his famous thought experiments. Let's say my shed is moving through empty space at a constant speed. In other words, my acceleration is zero. I would, of course, be weightless. I'm now going to turn on the shed's rockets. As the shed accelerates upwards faster and faster, it feels like there's a force pulling me to the floor. The shed's rockets are now accelerating me at 9.8 metres per second per second. This is actually quite comfortable. Now moving up to 50, 50 metres per second per second. I feel myself being dragged down. And now moving upwards now to 100, 100 metres per second per second, and 500, 500 metres per second per second. Oh, I'm going for it, 1,000, 1,000 metres per second per second. Ah! I feel like 
jam! Einstein now asked, what happens to a beam of light that shines across my accelerating shed? It takes time for the light to travel from one side of the shed to the other. But because I'm accelerating, by the time the light's travelled across the shed, the shed's moved upwards. So, from my point of view, it looks as if the light beam is curving downwards. But that can't possibly be, thought Einstein. Light always travels at a constant speed and in a straight line. It doesn't bend. And then he came up with an incredible answer to this paradox. No, it's not the light, really, that's bending. It's the space through which it's travelling. That's what has bent. Listen, this is such an extraordinary idea. I'm going to repeat it. If you're accelerating, then the emptiness, the void itself, space, is curved. So what's all this got to do with gravity? Hang on, just let me slow my shed down before it falls apart. Einstein realised that accelerating through space isn't the only situation in which you feel pulled to the floor. Gravity glues your feet to the ground in exactly the same way. In fact, now I've reduced my acceleration to a more comfortable 9.8 metres per second per second, it feels exactly as if the shed's sitting in my garden on Earth. 